Hi guys and welcome to this new tutorial. Something that I'm often asked is how I mix my skin colors or how I mix skin colors in general. And this is something I can really understand because I had my struggles with mixing skin colors for a long time myself. And at some day when I went to my art stores and found that there was something called flesh tone from Windsor and Juden, I was just amazed in the yes, finally I have a skin color. And when I brought it home and put it onto my palette, it really did not look anything close than a skin color. It more or less looked like, yeah, I don't know, a comic pink, rose pinkish whatsoever color. So nothing really that you can find in any human skin tone whatsoever. So this was a bit disappointing and I looked for alternatives. To start mixing your own colors, you actually only need five basic colors, which are which I will tell you in a minute. And of course you need a palette. As far as I'm concerned, I'm using this palette as you can see here, which is just a glass frame and I put some grayish paper underneath the glass. You could also use a white paper or another toned paper. I just do not want to use the white paper as colors look differently on white paper. Having a white paper as an underground, your brain always tells you that the color is dark or too dark already. If you use a grayish undertone, as I'm using here, you can see the colors more clearly as you could see otherwise. So if you have a gray undertone and a blank white underground and you put the very same color onto both colors and compare them directly next to each other, your brain will tell you that the color on the white paper is much darker than it is on the gray paper, although it's the very same color. So this is just the reason why I have a toned underground. And this also is the reason why many artists prefer painting on an Imprimatura underground, which is just a stained canvas. So Imprimatura is just the Italian word for staining your canvas, which is often done with burnt umber, which is, which is thinned down very much and applied to a canvas just to give it another base color. You can also use a gray, a blue, actually whatever darker color you want to use or feel more comfortable with. This just gives you a better impression on the actual value of the color that you are applying to the canvas, which would be a bit harder if you go painting on a white surface. And what an imprimatura actually is and how it works, I give you in a short demonstration here, which is actually just a oil color paper, which you can see here in a padded version. And I use burnt umber, my Autoless paint thinner, which is the Bob Ross one. I thinned it down very much and applied it to the paper with the brush. So actually let it dry and then you can go for your next steps in painting. Mixing all of your colors from these basic five colors is a good way, especially if you are new into oil paints or you're living on a budget and do not want to have 50 oil color colors lying around in your flat. This is just a good way to start with as you can mix well, I think 90% of all the natural colors that you might want to use in a painting out of these five colors. So you will not be able to mix any vibrant fancy colors like a hot pink or a fluorescent green or something, which is not a natural color at all. So if you want to use these or if you need to have these, you might need to buy them separately. But everything from a natural color palette, which can be found in nature, can more or less be mixed out of these five colors. And these are a white, and I myself use a titanium white, because this is more opaque than a zinc white, for example. I use a yellow, which is just a regular yellow, so just see that it's not any vibrant or lightened up yellow. A red, again a neutral red, so nothing really fancy. Same with a blue. and burnt umber as a brown tone. You could use any other brown tone, but I think burnt umber is the most common one and has, in my opinion, the nicest effects in the end. Even if you think, yeah, okay, but sometimes I need a black to get really dark in my colors. And yes, you might, but you don't really need a black paint to have a black, because you can mix your black paint on your own. If you combine the red, blue and the yellow, for example, you get a really, really dark blackish tone as well. It is not as black as it is out of the tube for the black pigment itself, but it has the advantage that it is a more living black, so to speak. So it has different hues into it, so it makes it look more realistically than 
the black out of the tube because this always look a bit flat. Having mixed your own black from your own colors, it gives you a much more realistic impression as if you would use just the black out of the tube. Of course, if you want to have it, just get yourself a tube of black paint. This is not bad at all. For mixing, be careful, because if you combine the black pigment and the yellow, it turns out to be somewhat greenish. So if you use black in your paint for mixing, just keep this in mind that a black pigment changes the hue and the value at the same time. I myself mix my colors with a palette knife as I feel this is the most efficient and clean way because you don't have to clean brushes in between and the palette knife can be just swiped off with the paper tissue and it's all clean. Something that you need to get into your mind, which was a hold of for myself for quite some time, is that there is no such thing as a skin color. Speaking of skin color, there can be thousands of different tones and values which create the skin color. This is just depending on the skin color of the person itself. So if it's an European skin color, if it's perhaps African, if, if it's more Celtic, so like pale and red haired, or if it's a bit more Asian. So these are just skin colors that are different from each other from the beginning. And then you always have to consider where the person that you are painting is located. So if the person is laying in the grass, for example, you will have more green tones in the skin as the green is reflected from the grass. If you have a person standing next to a rose bush, for example, then you will have more red colors perhaps in the face. Or if the person is wearing a blue scarf, then you will have more blues as, as normal in the skin tones. So this is something you always have to consider as well. Also where the light is coming from. So if it is a bright sunlight or a more diffused indirect light, or if you have moonlight, for example, or only very limited light in general, this all affects your skin colors. And having all of this in mind, it made my life mixing skin colors way much easier. So I did not really think about it like, oh, I need to have skin color, so just I need to have a matching color. And this again made it easier for me. One important thing that I've already mentioned in many other videos before, you do not even have to care that you match the 100% correct skin color that you have on your reference photo. So if you are somewhat close, it will be fine. So most of the people will not see the reference photo anyways. No one actually might notice in the end. Because what is really important is the color value, so the lights and the darks of the painting that you are doing. And even if the colors do not match in the end, so if you compare your original photo and your painting, it is not much of a deal. This happens to me quite often, that the colors are not matching 100%, perhaps even 70%. But the only thing that counts is that the end result looks fitting in itself, so that the colors fit within the painting and that the values are correctly done, so that your darks are as dark as they need to be and your lights are as light as they need to be. So, but now let's turn to the color mixing itself and I will show you how I do it. And I would suggest just trying this for yourself. You don't really need much paint for this and you will get a feeling for it quite quickly, I would say. As you can see me here doing, I just mixed some of the colors together and depending on how much of each color you're going to take, the more the value actually changes. So if we have most parts brown, the skin color is going to get a darker one, of course. If you add more red, your skin color is going to become a bit warmer. So, which can be used, for example, for your cheeks or your stomach area or all the areas covered with muscles, for example. If we add a bit more of a blue, you will get a colder skin color. Colder skin colors can, for example, be found in areas where the skin is close to a bone or in the skin tones of elderly people as the skin itself is becoming more translucent and you can see the veins underneath which have a blue-greenish tone to it. And depending on the light situation, this is a color you could use in these areas. If you add a bit more yellow to it, it becomes a warmer tone again. And so you just start mixing your skin colors and if you see uh, this is too red, for example, then you just add a bit of blue to tone it down. So just a complementary color of the color wheel. If you see a color is too cold, then you just add a bit of red or a bit of red and yellow to it to warm it up, so to neutralize the blue a bit. 
Adding yellow will also change the value a bit, so it lightens up the color a bit, but not any close to the extent that the white, for example, does. And what you actually can do every now and then, I do this myself, as you're going on to mix colors and mix colors and mix colors, it's quite easy to mix many colors once you have a hang for it, but we are going to try to mix a somewhat matching skin color. So if you have a reference photo, you can always put a little amount of the color that you've mixed on the reference photo or on the area that you're going to mix the color for and check if the color is correct. If you don't really want to stick too much to the reference photo and just want to have a natural looking skin color tone, for example, you can also use your finger as I did here at some point. So just to see how realistic the skin color that you mixed really is. So on a palette, you might think, ah, oh, this looks pretty cool and close to the color that I want to have. But if you put this color onto your finger, for example, or whatever area you want to test, you might see that this looks way, way different than you would have thought before. And so you can more or less fine tune your color mixing just to get the skin tones that you want to have. And this is something that I did here as well. What I typically do is I try to find the matching skin color for most of the painting, so which is the basic skin color, I would say. And then from this color forward, so I mix quite, quite an amount of this basic color. And from this basic color, I take me some parts off and mix the lighter values, the darker values, some transition values, just to have a basic tone, actually. If you have areas where you have to add more blue or more green, what, whatever, these colors will be mixed as well and separately. So if you have some green tones in your color, you, you just add a bit of blue and yellow to it, as blue and yellow create green. And this, of course, needs some practice. So this was nothing I could do in just one attempt and then everything was clear. No, it, it takes time and I'm not close to be perfect as well to this. So at times I, I really have to take my time to get the uh, skin color that I want to create myself. Perhaps not even skin color, uh, whatever color I actually need at the point. And yeah, it takes some time. Only using these five colors you actually can always correct the color value or the color hue or tone. Even if you are far far away or going into the wrong direction of your color, just set it aside, take a small amount out of the color that you have mixed and put some other color into it just to change the color again. So if you are seeing you're going on a wrong direction, so don't try to alter the complete amount of color as you will need more and more and more and more color. Just take a small portion of the color that you have mixed and add some color to this. So you can save up quite a lot of money because if you have a big blob of the wrong color and put more and more color into it to change it, it gets more complicated just to get a feeling for the amount of the color that you need to add to change actually something. So if you start from a, a small amount of the color that you've mixed, you will save much of your time and much of your colors, of course. Also a small tip in case you are a beginner in oil paintings, I would recommend not using the cheapest color that you can get actually. So not these 20 colors for $10 or so. The color mixing theory as I've showed you here is basically the same but the colors themselves react a bit differently. Although these colors are cheap and might look attractive in the first place, but they are way different in the handling itself as the artist grade colors actually are. So probably these are thinner and not as pigmented as the artist grade colors. And so you will need way more color to create the effect that you want to have, but having too much color does not give you the saturation and yeah, it causes problems that you will not face with the artist grade colors. And bottom line, you actually do not save so much money after all. If you have the artist grade ones, and I do have these from Dale and Roney, but it's not important which brand you have. So you can also use the Gamblin or Winsor & Newton or Pabeo, or whatever you actually can get in your area. As these artist grade colors are highly pigmented and more or less thicker than these cheap ones, you will need way less color than you would need from the cheap ones. And the application on canvas or paper is also very different compared to the cheap ones. 
So if you ask me, I would recommend using Ardes Great Colors. These are not too expensive as well. And if you start with the smaller tubes, so 75 milliliters or something, you can still go quite a while with these ones. So I switched to the large tubes with 200 milliliters at some point, especially for these colors that I use the most often. And having this technique in mind, if you go for these five colors, you can really go a long way with them. So basically this was it for this small color mixing tutorial. I hope as usual that this was of any help for you. And please let me know in the comments if you found it useful, if you have any questions or if I just expressed myself poorly and you did not know what I wanted to tell you, just let me know. I would be happy if it helped you. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, just to show me that you liked my video. And even better, subscribe to my channel to not miss out my new videos. So thank you for watching, have a great day and bye bye!